Muchas gracias, Herbert. Thank you very much, and uh, yo, yo, yo quiero de, decir uh, gracias a uh, Juan Antonio y Ignacio por uh, esta invitación a uh, este symposio. Uh, I'm going to speak in English, and I can't cover all the points I want, but I'll say a few words about uh, the context. Suarez was living a century, or a little after a century, after the colonization of the Americas uh, by the Spanish and others. And uh, that created in this 16th century, the 1500s, quite a discussion in Europe about human rights and freedom. And uh, Francisco de Vitoria, though he never went to the Americas, uh, he was there at Salamanca. He died in 1546. He gave the, the lecture on the Indies and where he defended their rights. Uh, and he was appalled by reports of uh, the mistreatment of the Indians that he received from the Dominican Bartolome de las Casas. Uh, and so Vit Vitoria began to say, these Indians have rights. They have a right to hear the gospel, but they can't be coerced uh, to believe. And he, he, he's, they could never be forced to convert by war or any other coercive means. And uh, he had a great saying in Latin, bellum nullum argumentum es proveritate fide Christiane. War is no argument for the truth of the Christian uh, religion or the faith. And in fact, he said conversion by force or war is Imane sacrilegium, you know, inhuman sacrilege. Now, Francisco Suarez uh, cites Francisco de Vitoria, his fellow Spaniard, though they're of different religious orders, uh, quite frequently. And in his De Legibus, uh, published posthumous, uh, uh, no, before he died in 1612, he writes, Although divided into various peoples and kingdoms, the human race always has a certain unity, which is not only that of a species, but also one that is political and moral, which the precept of mutual love and mercy proclaims, a precept that extends to all, even to strangers and of any condition whatsoever. Now, Vitoria had said there, is, there are human rights because the Indians are human. They're rational. And this is the basis for an international law. And many people today consider Vitoria perhaps the father uh, of international law, not uh, Hugo Grotius, as had been uh, perceived before. Uh, so Suarez extends on this, but he gives this principle of because of a common humanity, there is also a type of kinship, mutual love between all humans that should be there. Well, how does this affect religious freedom? Uh, this is what I try to discuss. And as many people know, in, in his treatise De Fide, Spe et Caritate, published five years after his death, he distinguishes between apostasy, infidelity, and heresy. So apostasy refers to the desertion, the abandonment of a faith already received. So if someone were to abandon Christianity for Judaism or paganism, that would be apostasy. But uh, in, it's not a species of, of heresy. Uh, but apostasy can in, include a type of infidelity. Uh, but it's not the same as heresy because a heretic still holds on to the Christian confession, albeit in a corrupted form. And speaking of the unbelievers, the infidel, he says there, there, there are different categories. And this helps him to develop the idea of the possibility of salvation for those who are not Christian, who are not baptized. So I mean, very briefly, the three orders would be first, those to whom the faith was sufficiently announced and proposed, but who refused to believe. He thinks most of these will not be saved. The, the gospel was preached to them. 
sufficiently, but they chose not to believe. But then there was also the second order, those who had heard nothing of the faith, neither sufficiently nor insufficiently, neither by preaching nor by rumor or war, for these he thought there was a good chance they could be saved if they followed the natural law. And this was had developed into a common opinion. The third order of infidels, is, this is much more uh, subtle, but these are those who have heard something of the Christian faith, you know, de Christiane fide aliquid, Odierunt, either by rumor or report or by some preaching, but not in a manner sufficiently, non tamen sufficientium. In this third order of infidels, he includes Turks or Muslims uh, and, and, uh, and those in the provinces of India, I guess Hindus he had, you know, of course heard about. Um, and, uh, and so in regard to religious freedom or at least toleration, he was more willing to grant it to the infidels or non-Christians than he was to apostates or the heretics. This is because the apostates and the heretics were baptized. And he believed that the character of baptism is an indelible sign of subjection to the church. Character baptismi est indelible signum subju subjucationis ad ecclesiam. So you're, you're baptized, you have a subjection to the church, of course, the Catholic Church. So the church would still have a type of jurisdiction over apost apostates and heretics. But he believed it was licit and holy to punish heretics and apostates from the faith and to compel them back. Um, he believed in restrictions, but unlike his uh, contemporary uh, St. Robert Bellarmine, he seemed uh, not to f favor executing them because he says punishments uh, it, it better served, should be medicinal. You know, uh, but Bellarmine said, no, they should be executed after a warning, which was St. Thomas Aquinas' position. But he thought that um, the non-Christians could be allowed religious toleration for their rituals, their worship in Christian domains, uh, provided that there was nothing in their worship which was against the natural law. And so he thought nothing in Jewish worship is against the natural law. In fact, their worship is a kind of foreshadowing of Christian worship. So Jews could be given toleration. And Muslims, since they uh, there's nothing in their rights which are contrary to the natural law. In fact, he says, it's, uh, it seems that they worship the one true God. And uh, so, you know, unam tantum verum deum adorant. This is his, what he says about uh, the Muslims. And so Christian rulers could deprive infidels of the, their, their right to worship if their rights, you know, ritus, uh, are opposed to the natural law. This is because secular rulers have the right to establish laws pertaining to the natural law. And this is actually still a legal question um, uh, about whether you could restrict a religion that has immoral activities or animal sacrifice or something like that. These issues have come up in courts uh, uh, in the United States. So uh, Thomas Aquinas, had believed that unbelievers could be given toleration like the Jews, be, uh, and Swatters agrees with him, but Swatters is more expansive towards the Muslims. I don't have this in my paper, but you know, Aquinas is always very measured in what he says, except when it comes to talking about Muhammad and the Muslims. Um, and, and so he says, no one believed Muhammad was a Prophet, this is Thomas Aquinas, sed homines bestialis in desertis morantes. You know, <laughs> so, uh, this, which, but Suarez was seemed, you know, of course, in this region, in Andalusia, there were 800 years of Muslim control. So Suarez was aware of, of the Muslims, and he agree, at least shows them, contrary to Isabel and Fer Fernando, <laughs> that they could be given, theoretically, religious uh, freedom. 
but I, in terms of where Suarez would stand today, he seems quite modern and in harmony with Vatican II regarding the possibility of the salvation of non-Christians, almost identical. He, he seems also to say that there could be religious freedom uh, for non-Christians and uh, as long as they do not violate the natural law, which is actually there in Dignitatis Humanae of Vatican II, which says within due limits, that there's a civil right to religious freedom, meaning if your religion is violent or immoral by nature, um, it could be restricted. And, uh, but where he would differ, and this is something that needs more explanation, is his, um, his attitude towards the Protestants. Uh, and this was because the, 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 there were religious wars going on, I think, during the time. And he lived, he died before the Peace of Westphalia, 1648, you know, which established the principle of uh, cuius regio, eius religio, you know, who, that you just follow the religion of whoever the ruler is. And it took a while. This was a part of uh, the events of Europe at that time. And so I would say Suarez plays a role uh, in on religious freedom and international law that shows movement towards modern sensibilities uh, and uh, building upon Francisco de Vitoria, where his ideas seem a little bit less ac acceptable even for Catholics from Vatican II is his attitude towards, uh, uh, towards Protestants or, or non-Catholic Christians. But even there, he did say that the children of the heretics should not be held responsible. Uh, they're not culpable. So there was developing this idea of culpability, which is always individual and, and, and particular. This is something Juan Antonio was saying in his talk, <laughs> that concentration on human rights, which are uh, particular and not just general. So I think I'll end there.